Many people point to the towering and imposing statue of Frederick Douglass on the same courthouse grounds as a way to balance out the constant reminder of the horror that our ancestors endured at the hands and feet of Confederate soldiers. However, there can be no balancing out when our own government continues to put a thumb on the scales of justice anytime there is an issue related to people of color. Certain members of our county council Certain members of our county council said they were not going to remove the statue because it would be disrespectful to the relatives of those depicted on the statue. But I say, what about us? What about the relatives of those who suffered for generation upon generation in bondage in the most deplorable of conditions for hundreds of years? Was that not also disrespectful? As we have been so eloquently reminded, history has its eyes on us. What will the legacy of our present be 50 years from now? I'm hopeful that someday local historians will remember what we stood up to those who attempted to hold on to a time that we cannot afford to return to. On this inaugural federally recognized Juneteenth holiday, let us pledge to remain undeterred in our fight to preserve these hallowed grounds of justice for those who have actually fought for the ideals of one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. This monument standing here symbolizes something. It symbolizes an old world that's coming down. Those who think that the South will rise again don't see the future. One of the things that I'm so proud of, it was asked to look around. Take a moment and look around. Look at who has gathered here. It's people of goodwill. This is a different Easton. This is a different Talbot County. Those who politically think that is Easton of the past are not paying attention to what is happening. You see, this statue is a symbol of hate. It's a symbol of hate. And it's fair to say that the Confederacy left a huge imprint on the United States. It was defeated militarily during the Civil War, but not defeated politically because of the white supremacist ideals that were not defeated. The Confederacy often gets a pass because it lost the war but refused to surrender. From here you had northern politicians who catered to the south. So even if you had ideas of fairness, not even necessarily equality, but that black people were human beings, but at the same time you needed the south to be elected, you had to step lightly around those southerners. You see, racism is like an infection. It may go away, but it always bubbles back up to the top. Amari Barker said, it's hard to be black in a world controlled by whites. We're always, we'll always have a double consciousness. While trying to be black, uh, while trying to maintain being black, you're, you got this white ghost hovering over your head saying, if you don't do this, you'll get killed. If you don't do this, you won't get any money. If you don't do this, nobody will think you're beautiful. If you don't do this, nobody will think you're smart. You see, that's the ghost. One of the legal discrimination against African Americans that began in the 1600s officially ended in 1964 with the, with the Civil Rights Act. So it was no longer acceptable to be publicly racist. So it had to go underground, you know, secret meetings and coded languages. You see, when you're accustomed to privilege, equality sounds like oppression. There's been a simple but heavy burden placed on African Americans left with nothing after being free. Because the Constitution that didn't ban slavery, without a doubt, is one of the root causes of the problems that we have in this country today. And you may say to yourself, Devin, what do you mean? We've made strides, we've had a black president, you're no longer slaves, you're free to live wherever you want, and as long as you get the proper education, you just want to make everything about race. My response to that, what about the war on drugs, the crack epidemic, mass incarceration, racial profiling, the welfare reform bill, voter suppression, and that's just to name a few. These things that stand as roadblocks in order to stifle the gains made by African Americans in this country. We're still suffering the after effects of two powerful regimes that make up a bulk of U.S. history. That's slavery and Jim Crow. 
You see it in the form of the prison population, health care, life expectancy, income, and education. So pardon me if I look at this statue as another way to preserve white privilege in this country. The fact that it stands on a courthouse lawn where African Americans are often victims of injustice and guilty before proven innocent is a travesty in itself. It speaks volumes to see this image before heading into that courtroom. You see, there's many people who don't believe in equality. There's many people who believe that there's a natural order of things and that whites are at the top. And to some extent, I would say we're still fighting that civil war and the South is winning. This country missed a huge opportunity to make a real difference in how we treat each other. And, un and at times, I'm unsure on how to fix the recycled hate that plagues this country. And even when you're trying to deal with, uh, heal from the after effects and talk about moving forward, it's kind of difficult when you see images of police brutality and young men being tased, thrown on the ground and repeatedly kneed in the ribs. This happened in Ocean City just last week. You see, we're constantly reopening the wounds of injustice that surrounds you. You can't escape it. And yet we're forced to look at it, its roots, on a public platform. This is deeper than preserving history. This statue is a wound that will never heal as long as it stands on this courthouse lawn. Yeah. Yeah. Talba County, you do not want this to be a representation of what your county stands for. Yeah. If you leave this statue up, Without saying a word, you will silently let us know where you stand. As Dr. King so eloquently stated, we are here in general sense because first and foremost, we are American citizens, and we are determined to apply our citizenship to the fullness of its meaning. We are here also because of our love for democracy, because of our deep-seated belief that democracy transformed from thin paper to thick action is the greatest form of government on earth. Today we gather collectively to call for the removal of this Confederate monument known as the Talbot Boy statue that sits on the court circuit courthouse lawn. I'm glad to stand with you all today to say that we're standing on the right side of justice and history has dictated so. I stand today to say that this Confederate monument known as the Talbot Boys is no longer welcome here in Talbot County. I stand with you today to say that the pain and agony that this statue has projected for the years that it's been there will no longer project the pain and agony on future generations here in Talbot County. I stand with you today to say hate has no home here in Talbot County. I stand with you today to declare that change has come to Talbot County, and it is us individually coming together who will bring about this change so that all people can feel welcome and embraced here in Talbot County. I will not be satisfied until this Confederate monument is removed from the courthouse lawn so that all individuals, especially black and brown people who enter into the halls of justice can be assured a fair and just trial. I will not be satisfied until all marginalized people feel that their voice is heard through a democratic process. I will not be satisfied until equity comes to Talbot County and is considered the bedrock of our core foundation. We ask you, what can you do now? When you leave here today, what can you do? We've had a great show of entertainment. It's been wonderful. But we can't get the statue down without you. What you can do, you can contact the county council. You can show up the county council meetings. You can call in. You can email. You can write them. You are the constituents of Talbot County. 